right guys, so welcome back to the channel. Thank you for hanging out, spending a few moments here with me. Now, if you're new, definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button. I was looking at my analytics and 78% of the people that watch the videos are not actually subscribed. So really guys, hitting that subscribe button, sharing the videos, liking, commenting, it all really helps the channel continue progressing forward. So uh, it's, it's definitely a, uh, much appreciated. We're almost hitting that 70K mark and that's a, a pretty big milestone. Now today what we're going to do is take a look at a couple of builds that belong to my buddy Peter. One of which is a carbon copy of this 397. What it is is a 345 block that got bored and stroked to a 397. Custom grind, custom grind cam by Genetti Racing that's going to work really well with forced air. Forged everything. So what he's going to do is basically take the same exact build that I have and he's going to slap a uh, supercharger positive displacement blower on it uh, I believe it's called the Edelbrock e-force and many of you guys have probably seen it on the channel already What was that pull? Horsepower torque wise. It made 500 right there. 500 wheel horsepower? Yeah. And then what do we got in torque? Uh, 468, 469 right here. He has the, the Edelbrock on a fully stock Challenger RT with long tube headers and he put down about 500 wheel horsepower with that thing. Now I know many of you guys didn't click on, on on the video for that. You guys are looking for the update of the 2019 Scat Pack 392. The last that we left off with that was he took a twin turbo setup by Helion and put it on his 2019 Scat Pack that was 100% stock, bumped up the boost to 10 pounds and got about 760 wheel horsepower and similar in torque. Now what they did from there is upgrade the fueling system to see if they could bump up the boost a little bit more and squeeze some more power out of it. They got to about 4,000 RPMs during the tuning and decided to cut it short because it was just making so much power for that stock engine. They decided to send it off to the, the machine shop, put a bore and a stroke on that 392, get it to 430, not 426, which is what I originally thought he was going to end up doing but they went a little bit bigger to the 430 fully forged engine custom cam by Genetti racing that's going to work well with the twin turbo setup and really this is you know that's that's the update now what I'm gonna do is kick it over to um, Bob who works at the machine shop and really his specialty is working on the blocks and he's going to show you guys some some inside info, some some cool footage. I'm going to put a uh, you know a, him up, and then after him we have Tony, who was really the the point man for building this 397. And Tony Tony did such a great job with my car over at Genetti Racing. He uh, he pieced everything perfectly together. This thing runs like a a damn monster. So. Uh, with all of that being said, I'm going to kick it over to those guys, and uh, yeah, let's get it. Basically, what we did is we took in the uh, baseline the engine, you checked the line board, do the main bearing clearance, dial board gauge, everything, uh, deck the block, went ahead and uh, play honed it with the, with the plates. Nice, nice big thick aluminum. Plates represent the cylinder head, and then we also uh, balance it. Obviously, there's no, there's not a crank in the balancing machine right here, but it's a uh, penis balancing machine. It, you know, what it does, it just 
you set it all up all by the weights, the weight of the crankshaft, the whole the whole assembly. And then you spin it and there you go. Pretty nice deal. Blocks your deck. The uh, camp tunnel is checked. The obviously we uh, kind of go over everything, you know, tap all the holes, you know, one way or the other. You know, if it's uh, The head studs, we tap all the holes with the head studs. The head, the valve, the valve job is done over here. It's all done, you know, the sun is 2500. Uh, all form cutters, you know, we have cutters made for all the different cylinder heads, different valve angles. All the valve heights are set, you know, to the, within two thousands. Now, uh, you, you assembled all the, the valve heads for this. Both the six four and the five yes, seven absolutely. came back. Yes, we did. So all the clearances were set, and yeah, yeah, spring spring pressure, the uh, the spring height, the uh, the valve job, the you know the, the CCs. We re resurfaced the bottoms of the cylinder heads. Um, Ted said you also had uh, you ground the cam so there was a correct fit inside. Well, the we block. just polished it. Polished the, it. The new cams that the first cam, the very first engine, I guess they had problems with the uh, cam being tight. Tony over there, they just they just put the cam in the lathe over there, and they just polished the journals, and it was all right. But the new cams, the Texas Speed cams that, that are coming, uh, they must they must grind your own cams, and they're small and they fit nice. Okay. So that problem that's not really an issue. Um, as far as uh, cam bearing stuff like that, you know, we, we kind of classify that as sort of like the LS. That if they look good and they fit, don't touch them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. it's, it's more trouble. You know, you can still clean the block without, like the old small blocks and the big blocks. You really couldn't, you know, clean clean behind the cam bearings and get if there was any little, you know, little, you know, grinding grit, whatever. That would, you know, you had to take the cam bearings out. But these engines, the way they're, the way they made the cam bearings. You can flush everything out. You don't have to worry about anything being stuck behind the camera. Okay. So basically, if they look good, we just leave. Them. Okay, great. You know, I mean, maybe it's a cop out, but you know, sometimes you know, leave well enough alone. You know, I mean, and the, and the Chrysler has such a big cam bearing up front. You know, and progressively smaller as you go through. It's a, uh, you know, it's it's a really nice deal. I, I, I really think that I, mean, I until we did that first one for you, the. Uh, we never even seen a, a, a five seven Hemi or of any sort, and uh, it came in complete. We took it all apart, and you look at it, it's like, wow, this is really a pretty freaking nice motor. All right, so my name's Tony. Work at Genetti Racing, and I'm putting together Pete's new Hemi mill. It's a six four stroker. It's uh, four hundred and twenty nine cubic inches. And uh, one thing I wanted to show you guys is that. Um, this engine is scat pack and it has piston oiler stock from the factory and as you could see down in the bottom Weisco has put a notch in the piston which is great it's just slightly in the wrong area and as you could see I'm pointing to the actual oiler and you could see it's going to crash right into this piston skirt so the thing to do is just to kind of just move it over which I've done in the past on our other GM LSA stroker builds, and it's not an issue, but I just wanted to point it out to you. And um, so basically I've done this one over here and I'm gonna rotate the engine around so you could see it real well. And as you could see that I've actually moved the boiler over right in the middle of their relief. And uh, the rule of thumb when building an engine is, Anything that rotates in the engine, you need about 50 thousandths clearance around anything and you're in good shape. Now, it just so happens that this welding wire that I'm pointing to this piece in, I've actually just made a tool out of it and this is my little gauge. So I just kind of stick it in there and just make sure I have the clearance. And this is actually 60 thousandths thick, so a little bit extra wouldn't hurt. But, uh, so I just wanted to go over that with you guys and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.